Mr. Chairperson, Madam the President, ladies and gentlemen, I would like today to send my greetings to the Ashrafis in Camp Liberty. They are the people I was in charge of protecting. Sometimes I was successful in alleviating their sufferings, and sometimes I failed badly. I'll ask them to forgive me wherever I failed. But I would like today to send a few messages to the United Nations from this platform. My message is, those who know the structure and the chain of command of the Ashraf Committee, they would know that the crime that was committed in Ashraf on the 1st of September is impossible to happen without the active participation of the Iraqi security forces. And let me tell you that the chain of command in Ashraf, all forces in Ashraf, including the rapid deployment forces, the police and the army, they do not report to their respective ministries. They report to the chair of Ashraf Committee, who is Falah Fayyad. When you understand this kind of structure, you will also understand the responsibilities where they lie. So I would like to say to the United Nations that they promised the Ashrafis protection and they let them down. They let them down simply because they are covering up for the crimes committed by the Prime Minister's office. Now, I would like to address diplomatic community in Baghdad, whom I used to brief every week. After each visit I go to Ashraf, I brief the diplomatic community. And they know very well what happened. And I could confirm to you that it's impossible that anything happens in Ashraf without the diplomatic community knows the details. So, those reports who come out and try to cast some doubt about who did what in Ashraf, they are misleading. We are interested in rest, re, restorative justice. And when I say restorative justice, you will ask me, to restore what? We want to restore the protected status of the Ashrafis. <laughs> of course, the issue of impunity will remain there. We should not tolerate impunity. But the priority today is to protect and save life. There was enough loss of life, unnecessary loss of life, completely criminal loss of life. And it has to stop. So let's restore the rights of the Ashrafis. The United Nations is capable of doing that. But again, I would like to join my voice to General Phillips about the international community, diplomatic community in Baghdad, they all bank on the fact that the Ashrafis will eventually go back to Iran. This is the plan made by the United Nations, and I was part of it, that the transfer of the Ashrafis from Ashraf to Liberty will eventually end up destroying the organization and the Ashrafis will eventually decide to go home 
And this what explains why countries are not offering resettlement places. Because Kobler used to tell them, these people are not free. The day we free them, they will decide to go home. So let's put pressure on them. So they will go home, and you don't have to make any initiatives. If you offer them places, of course they will not go home. So the conspiracy, and I call it conspiracy, it's there at the United Nations. If they want to change the situation, if they want to protect, they could protect. Let's restore the status of protected people to the Ashrafis. This is the most urgent issue we need to address. As, uh, liberty today needs to be declared as a camp of refugees. And this has been promised by the UNHCR. They will do their job to make them recognized as refugees, protected refugees. Why is UNHCR not doing its job? Sometimes they, you hear rumors saying that, oh, the Ashrafis are not cooperating. But those who understand the system, how it works, they will straight away understand that it's not the Ashrafis who are not pro uh, uh, cooperating. It's the UNHCR that is dragging its feet. They are not trying to go through the process to recognize these people as refugees. And let me tell you, the Ashrafis were asked to leave their home of 25, 26 years. They left. They were asked to present themselves for identification in liberty. They did. They were asked to come for interviews. They did. So how can we blame the Ashrafis for obstructing the system? It's the UNHCR, it's the United Nations that is dragging its feet for the simple reason they do not want to upset El Maliki. Mr. Chairperson, if we are serious about investigating the crime against humanity that's happened in Ashraf, it should be an independent investigation. And from this platform, I salute the independent experts who recently came to this conclusion that there is no way to trust the government of Iraq to undertake such an investigation. It has to be an independent body. So let's face these responsibilities. Everybody should take their responsibility. And we said it many times that the United Nations must be held accountable for the lives of these people who they misled to liberty. They were misled to liberty to be easily targeted. So from this platform, I once again put all the responsibility of the United Nations to restore the fundamental rights of the Ashrafis to the status of protected persons and all the rights that are related. And the United Nations is responsible about that. I thank you very much for your attention.